My name is Jonah Jonathan, and welcome once again to the Jazz Musician's Voice. Today, I have the wonderful opportunity of speaking with a good friend of mine, Cass Weinbrin, actually somebody that uh, I've known for quite some time from the Litchfield Jazz Camp. He was an ensemble with me, and he's one of those cats that's gone into the field of uh, becoming a producer and uh, has combined jazz and hip hop, and he offers some of his points on music. His uh, music has been streamed millions of times online. Um, work with some big names, including Joey Badass and Static Selecta um, in hip hop. So we hope you guys enjoy this interview. Please subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends, and stay tuned because we have a lot of more future content coming. Thanks for watching. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm here and I'm able to talk with a good friend of mine, Cass Swinebrin, actually someone I've known for about 16 years uh, from a Litchfield jazz camp. Uh, we were in an ensemble together, the Advanced Ensemble. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, Cass is an, a wonderful uh, classical and jazz pianist uh, and award-winning producer working with some of the top names in uh, hip hop. So go ahead uh, and tell people who aren't yeah. familiar where you are from and how you yep. got involved with music initially. Yeah, man, for sure. So I'm, I'm from New York, born and raised um, downtown. Um, yeah, so um, I was, my, my, my father was, is, a, is a musician um, or is a film musician. Anyway, so yeah, I was just, um, yeah, so I started playing classical music and doing it at a very young age and then going from classical music to, to jazz music, and then to, from jazz music I got more into, um, and then from jazz music I got into Broadway, and, and Broadway, and then I got into hip hop as well, and pop music as well. So it's like, I mean, you know, it's like I grew up in, um, you know, we grew up in some of the greatest time, like in middle school to hear all the greatest hip hop and pop music and R&B. So it's like, I've always been influenced by it all. So it's like, I always, but you know, the training from jazz is I feel like is the best, to understand all for all my gigs i always get jazz guys you know if i do pop gigs and it's like everything plus you know hip-hop gigs i always get jazz guys so it's like it's to me it's it's so important to understand what jazz music is to, to see where the future how it brings everything else together so i wouldn't yeah. say i'm an ex-jazz musician i'm a jazz musician there's, there's jazz musicians and myself i always you know i always stay you know i <laughs> I always do my own thing, but it's it's very it's it's definitely in you know respect to what Herbie Hancock and Miles Davis and Bill Evans have inspired and Quincy Jones has have inspired. So that's where yeah, I'm at. yeah. So I mean, you you got it. You got involved uh, like going in a crossover with hip hop and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you said you were exposed to a lot of cats at um, you you attended SUNY Purchase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, yep. for school. Um, so talk a little bit about uh, what the experience was like at Purchase and then yeah, how did you get, yeah, yeah, sure. get involved in um, hip hop? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, see, the, you know, the best thing about Purchase, I mean, it's, it's like they had both the college aspect as well as the conservatory aspect and as well as like the real, real like specified jazz conservatory with, you know, I mean, they had incredible cat faculty there, some real killer cats, some really great musicians out of it. Even in my class, um, surreal, Went there, you know, surreal, you know, surreal, Amy, you know, um, this other guy, Matt, Matt Simons, who's a pop, pop, great. you know, Matt, Matt Simons. I don't know. I'm not familiar with all these names. Wayne, but... Wayne, you know, you know, Wayne Tucker, Wayne Tucker. Yeah. 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 Wayne, Wayne's there. Um, so, I mean, there's other cats as well. I mean, Sam Dillon, you know, Sam. And Andrew yeah. Dillon, yeah. Like, I know Sam. And, real killer players. Yeah, Wayne. Yeah. Wayne, uh, Wayne was playing with, uh, Taylor Swift for a while, I think, right? Yeah, yeah no, I mean, yeah, he had, he had a one-off gig with him. Him and Chad had a one one-off gig. But, um, yeah, I mean, Chad left Quits Brown, man. Uh, that, that's actually Noah, Noah, Noah Kilman actually went to purchase as well um, afterwards. But, yeah, I mean, Chad also, Chad went to Lich, Litchfield. I don't remember if you remember that. Uh, could, could have. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> there's a lot of cats. You know, there's a lot of cats. Always a lot of cats, man. But, um, yeah. But yeah, so I mean, yeah, so I mean, yeah, so Purchase was cool because it combined both of them. And my roommates, like, were, were all rappers. I ended up, like, you know, being roommates with, uh, with all these, like, rapper guys and hip-hop guys. And I was studying jazz music. And it's like, 
to me, it's like, I mean, I always liked, I always had an open mind towards music regardless. So it's like, you know, it's like in, you know, doing classical or jazz music, yet listening to all like 90s hip hop and R&B and pop music at the same time. So it's, I mean, especially, and it's like when I was trying to make music, I was always paying attention to what everybody was else was listening to. They weren't listening to jazz music, but everybody would love hip hop. And I feel like for me, it's like, I loved how hip hop was, was, was the next Except for where jazz was, especially listening to Nas and what he did with Amaj and Mall's and samples, and like and you know Big L and DJ Premier, like what they did with uh, with that whole entire New Age that vibe and like that continuation of that sound, even though it wasn't trained in the same concept as you know and how how people study you know bebop and the language of and the and the artistry of jazz music jazz music specifically, but I mean for me. It's, it's like still, I, I always was interested in about how different music was being used. So, I mean, that's, I mean, I eventually, you know, I got more into involved in the world music classes that they had at, at Virtus from studying at the salsa band with Arturo Farrell to studying, you know, to studying uh, world music with Frank London and um, Plasmatics, you know, and still making beats at the same time and writing pop songs. So, excuse me, but um, yeah, that's what I loved about Virtus. And then once I, and then right, Right before I graduated, I started making beats as well, and finally just producing everything on GarageBand myself, rather than playing in bands. And that's that's when I started. That's when I got a call from um, from 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 Duckdown Records, who who was Static Selectors, who was a record label. And then Sam Mac Miller reached out, and then um, and then then I worked with Action, and then I worked with Static. And Action actually, hey, ironically, hit up my my guy Dom Misana and other other people that I went to school with as well. So. It was really cool. They were always, you know, they always, they were always so impressed with my talent and they always liked me as a person. So it's like then when I went when I was able to link up with them, it was really like, it was a really great, great relationship that I built. And it's like, and now it's crazy amounts of streams, you know, and it's like, you know, the music industry itself is, it, it, it's, it's, it's it, it, you know, there's a lot of things that are wrong with it. There's not as much, you know, yes, technology has made it available. And yet, mess technology has made um, opportunities available for everyone. But at the end of the day, it's like you know, there's still there's still non-transparent problems of the music industry that you know were swept under the rug, or, and people weren't bringing it up to the forefront. And that's you know, and that's what our I mean that you know, it's like when I try to bring it up to like my partners and like you know Joey Badass and Jake, you know, and Jake Coles before Static Select in this position, and it's like. It, you know, it's you know, it can lead into like struggles and fights that you don't want to have with people. You don't get into you know, you don't do you don't you don't, you don't have a shame same passion of music or wanting to make records with somebody and then you end up getting into lawsuits and you know it's it's not cool. You know, and I mean it's it's just nobody wants to deal with a lawsuit. It doesn't matter who you are, you know. And it's like and and just at the end of the day, it's like you know the music industry itself has to heal itself, and it's like. That's why as musicians, regardless of what genre we play, there is something we can learn from every single one of us, how we approach music itself. And I think uh, for me, I would love to see more collaborations. I mean, my, 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 my dream is to see Wits and Marsalis play with either do a tribute to the RZA or Nas. That's what I really <laughs> want to see. Branford already, his brother Branford has already worked with DJ Premier. Yeah. They, I mean, I mean that, that was 90. Right, Randall Marsalis himself has done perhaps done records with DJ Premier, and he's worked with and he's worked with so many, you know, countless people, and he got calls for the calls for that. And also, it's not the first time that jazz musicians have been, you know, fusion is itself was, you know, Wayne Shorter's like what Wayne Shorter was doing with Rather Report was trying to make pop music. I just feel like you know now what Kendrick Lamar is doing with jazz music, I feel like is. And what and you know and what Tribe Called Quest and DJ Premier and Jay Dilla and everybody else, you know, and even like yeah, young even, guys uh, like Flying Lotus and Flying Lotus and like yeah. what I did with Jackson Bronson and you know it kind of falls in, in uh, into all of this. It's like it's not you know for we're not playing we're not playing we're I mean we sampled on, on Green Dolphin Street we we sampled the record but I mean we used it for another song with Talib Kweli and you know Salas P and it's and 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 somebody else. Um, Instead of, you know, playing another, you know, instead of showing how, how, how much we know how to play over E-flat major, you know, it's, you know, it's, there's a beauty to that as well. Like, I'm not saying it's not a beauty, but it's just, just to see where the music can go. I think that's the real beauty of what jazz music is. 
You know, it's you yeah. know, it's it's always progressing the future, and I feel like that's the more unity we have together from the the new generations. That's what I want to see more so. And it's like you know, I don't think there should be any friction, regardless if you're a musician. And it's like you shouldn't be thinking about that. That the future of jazz music is not where it should be. The future of jazz music is where it always will be. You know, it's a it's part of jazz. It's part of hip hop. It's part of whatever you want to call it. It's part of what you should be proud about what music you want to make and not put yourself yeah. into a box genre. I make it all. Like I'm, done, I'm doing a country project, I do R&B project and hip hop project. It's like... Well, you know, you also, you know, going into, uh, I mean, you must have been influenced from a young age living in uh, Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. To, I remember uh -huh. playing a party at your uh, parents' house living uh -huh. in Chelsea being in that area, being able to go to like uh, all sorts of stuff, jazz or hip hop and all the different concerts around there. So, yeah, um, yeah for sure. I mean, you know, my, my parents were also, you know, musicologists and really in, into like, you know, the whole entire thing, you know, they, they, they really, they never put any, I mean, they, they bought me the Eminem records and they bought me the Miles Davis records. You know, they never put any restriction about what I could do. It's like, even recently, it's like, you know, it's just like, they, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're very, you know, I mean, I, but I did this all myself, realistically. I mean, I, yes, they gave me opportunities that I'm very grateful for, but I mean, I had to do, go out for them. You know, it's not like, uh, you know, they, they managed me, you know, that's, or gave me opportunities themselves that I, you know, that I piggybacked and I piggybacked them. I, I mean, people reached out to me and I worked with them. I went out to work with them directly. And it's that's just the nature of yeah. like, that's, it doesn't matter. It's it's like I mean I don't care. If somebody's going to show me love. I'm going to show them love directly. That's how it is. It doesn't matter where they come from. Who cares who they are? You know, it's the other side of town, another city. It doesn't matter. It's the nature. Uh, it's this is, the, this is just my you know. I because if not, you know, you're just basically basically on your you know doing you know you're just basically surrounding yourself with the same people or you're not growing. And it, to me, it's so much important to understand culture and society and. If somebody shows you love, I want to. I want to be able to show love back as much as I can. From you know, even now, yeah, it's like some yeah. some of the some of the people that I worked in the hip hop world, they have foundations and uh, you know, and opportunities to like volunteer for like supporting the community. I'm Duck Down does that. You know, they and from from because because you know, um, um, Smith and Wessons are like one of the huge artists from there who actually are very influenced by jazz music themselves, and they're legends in their own right. Um, I don't know if you, I mean, this is like really the specifics of like what makes underground the, the greatest of underground hip hop. Buckshot, you should check out Buckshot, um, who shot you. And um, there's a lot, I mean, they worked with Pac, man. You know, they're legends in their own right. And um, they, they, they played the Blue Note as well. And it's like, for them, it's like, they're, 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 their parents would listen to, would play them jazz music. I spoke to them a couple of times, but they were still much more involved in the poetry and the, and the rapping aspects. So it's like, and now they have like foundations for that they're supporting the people of their, their, their communities in Brownsville and it's like in other places, you know, and it's like, if they're going to show me love on the records, it's like, I feel like it's my responsibility to really help out and see what I can do and help make the world a better place besides just the music, you know, it's like, and they, you know, for, I think for young cats who are um, interested in kind of going in your direction and doing like uh, production yeah. and making beats and stuff like, what would be your advice for uh, I mean, it's for still, cats it's, doing that? Yeah, I mean, you know, everybody has a way. Everybody has a way of doing of, do, of making beats. It's like you know, you everybody. But I still think education and understanding the language of music is so so paramount because it's like when you're real. If you really want to be a music producer or a musician, or I think you really have to be able to provide every kind of genre available. I think that's what your goal is. Every single kind of genre, instead of if you're if you're a musician, it's like you should be could be able to be called to do a film score and be able to do like whatever a hip hop thing, as well as to do a you know a pop record as well. I think that's what really makes you a musician. And it's like the more and the more understanding you have of like the different, and then and also at the same time, be a musicologist, be a student of the game. It's like, not only just if you do hip hop, cool, but I mean, you know, do you really understand the, you know, the history of like psychedelic funk music in a sense, you know, which I think is just kind of like its core value or, you know, or even like how, how Dizzy Gillespie and it's like a bebop's influence in hip hop, like, you know, be a stu really a student of the game. It's not like, I mean, 
hip hop. I mean, I mean, remember, music is it's, to me the music of the future is based off the music of the past. So the more understanding of you have of the past and how music is, and even traditions and like and and ways and like techniques that people use, I feel like that only makes you stronger as a musician. And it's like you know you should be DJing, you should be I mean be and before COVID I was DJing every Monday as well. So it's like I mean it's. You know, I try and, you know, I mean, I DJ the way, you know, it's like, you know, whatever I do, you know, I just play music that people want to hear, you know, it's great nature of the game. And it's like, yeah, I'm still playing piano as well. I'm getting calls for the keyboards as well. Sure. You know, so. And you're doing, uh, you're also like uh, teaching uh, some music yeah, business, I'm teaching, business yeah, I'm online, teaching. right? Well, I mean, again, yeah, I'm teaching the business of it. I mean, I'm teaching the, you know, I'm teaching people like strategies of how to get yourself involved with it. I mean. The nature of the business is it's like you want to make your, you know, you want to, you want to find the demand. You want to find the supply and the demand. That's what you want to find. Because at the end of the day, it's like you want to find it, you know, it's like that, that, that's how you're able to, you know, who's going to buy the record from you? And what beats are you making that somebody else is going to buy or somebody else is going to use? Like yesterday I had a session that people just told, told me right, right before I was talking, but it was yesterday I had a session for a, for a, for a potential record for Rick Ross. That, you know, I played for the guy who had had, had had a relationship. He was in demand and he approved it. So it's like, I know I'm already good because I have a record that would could fit if, I, if we would have the right potential for that or for that opportunity. Because, you know, I mean, because that's what, what matters to me. Yes, I already have the credits, but it's like I'm still trying to get placements for the beats that I have. Because what's going to be, I mean, a beat, I mean, a beats which are basically the music and the tracks. Of, of the music, I mean, they're, I mean, first of all, it's like, they're only, to me, they're only good if, if the songwriter gets on it. If not, they're just a beat. And any, anybody just has a beat. Like, so it's like, the more you're able to put onto, you know, your beats and get your name out there, that's, that's, yeah, and, and this is your real passion. And if this is what you really love to do, it's like, you know, you just want to, you know, just go, go for it. But again, music and tracks, and it's like, where music, especially where hip hop is going, I feel like there's a lot of jazz, jazz, jazz could be used. I feel like hopefully there'll be more communication between how like beat makers and how instrumentalists are able to work together. And it's like, you know, and I think that's really, and I think, I think it's instead of, instead of the competition aspect of the music industry, I feel like the, com the, the more collaborative aspect of the music industry will be more, that's, that's where, well, that, that's what the next step is. Instead of somebody like, you know, I've been in like specific, you know, situations where like, you know, people are, you know, are, are haters. Just, you know, be, even just because of the client, the placements I have, not even because who I am. It's like, whatever. But I mean, it's, you know, even not saying that, but it's just, I'm just saying, it's like, I feel like that's, that, that was the nature of the old music industry where you're trying to sell CDs. Now everybody's selling streams and now the rate is not in our favor. So the more of our collaborative we are as a union to go against the Spotify's, the Apple's, and then just get a rate maybe even change the whole entire financing of the music industry to begin with again it's because you know of the of the valuation of music is so different than it used to be well you know, that's why it's like yeah. you can't be in your box like i mean winston i mean i still want to see what to play with jim jay-z or and nas and, and, and Risa. like i mean you know, I hip hop is really worth jazz. I mean, I don't really. I mean, I don't even know if it's for me to say. It's you know, it's because there's traditions of you know African American traditions in this country just were passed on to the next generation of people that inspire the music. Whether it was New Orleans and everybody coming together in Congo Square that led to the the the, the, the you know that started the whole entire thing, or whether it was. Or, you know, or people were just jamming in this, you know, what's the difference between the jam, jam circle, the jam session, and the, and the rap cypher? Culture, that's the only thing. Culture and, 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 and the diversity, you know, and, and the time. You know, hip-hop now is so, so much progressive than, you know, than, than it used to be in the 90s. And or, you know, than when, it, when it first came out in the late, late 80s. You know, even when I was in like high school, it was like it was only a few of us that were like listening to like you know, they're listening to real hip hop. You know, it's like I mean then, and it's like I mean you know after like after Eminem, some people just fell off after listening to it. I was like you know I mean I've got it some Nas right after that, so it's like and Snoop Dogg and you know Wu Tang. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean uh, I mean 
I've been I mean, to uh, some of those Rock the Bells concerts with 75,000 yeah. people, you know, that's a... Yeah, yeah, that's a gig, uh, man. That's a gig, you know. Um, that's that's a gig. You don't yeah. see 75,000 people playing, come coming to, to, to see you any jazz musician, even if it is Kenny G and his success. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean... But I just want to see more collaborations directly. I feel like that is what's needed right now. I mean, it's like beyond, you know, beyond... And they want to see, you know, just like... Because the importance is that the, the traditions can be taught, you know? I mean, it's, it's up to somebody to want to listen, but it's like, you know, it's, you, you know, it just meant, you know, I mean, I think it just it depends on us, the gen, next generation of cats, you know, to, to be able to try and find a bridge, you know, try and find more opportunities where, where like, musicians could be featured as much as the track and have festivals where it's a band as well as a DJ, as well as, you know, jazz solos, as well as MCs, you know? And how has, or, uh, you know, how has uh, COVID affected you? You feel like you're more productive at home making beats? Yeah, or? I got, yeah, I got, I got very lucky, man. I mean, I was, I was busy during the whole entire thing. <laughs> Bless me. But, um, no, I got, I mean, I got very lucky. Right when COVID hit, I was doing a project with this guy in Brazil just to take my mind off of that, right before that, it was like I wanted a, I wanted a comp uh, my first songwriting competition. So, I mean, after when COVID I was hitting, I was like doing projects. Like I got a couple of different projects out there. I mean, I launched different couple of singles, man. Like, just got a call for more, for more, for more production for another song. So, well, uh, Cass, where's the best place for uh, people to check you out? Thanks for being yeah, man. Um, yeah, for sure, man, for sure. You can check me out on um, on, on Instagram, on which is very simple. My name is Cass, C-A-S. I play keyboard, and I'm a producer. So my Instagram is Cass Keyboard Producer. And then my and then, then my, my band's name is called C.C. Beats, S-E-E, S-E-E Beats. We named it after my, my partner's daughter, who's a, he's, he's, he's a great beat maker. And that's that's another thing. It's instead of, like, I collaborated with more beat makers than I didn't necessarily with bands. I mean, even though I've done the band stuff as well, it just for me, it's like, that's where my strengths are going in. And it's like, even today, or like right after this, I got another call for another session that, it, you know, I'm going to do, because the best thing about today's world is that this is my studio. You know, I don't need, I don't need to go anywhere to make music or to get a collaborations or even to make money from the, from the records. Even like some of the biggest records I did like recently, like, I mean, I did, I did, I did, I did a song that Joey Badass and Jam and, and, and G, G Easy uh, chose for a beat for that they, they, they like so much. I did it for my crib. Great, man. Like, I mean, and they recorded my voice studio, and it was like, yo, I, and, and, I, and then now, now the track has like a million plays. And it's like, like, it's super simple now. And that was before COVID. That was working remotely. Like, we were, we've been working remotely. I mean, there is nothing, sometimes, sometimes something is better. Sometimes it's better to like meet people and just see the reactions of a beat. Like, but it's like in the end of the day, it's like, you know, I mean, if you're able to get good products from wherever you are, I mean, it's, you know, like, that's the best thing about COVID is that it brought a lot of us together. You know, I just, I mean, you know, just the whole entire thing. And it's also the conversations that I've been having via panels. It's like, that's, this is where, this is where a lot of, the, a lot of different industries are going. You know, I mean, this is just a little too, it probably came in too fast, but it might have been an experiment in a sense, you know, I mean, I mean, I think it's great, you know, that we can get connected. And that's like, I love seeing like what Chad, uh, like what, what Chad left with Brown did um, with the, with the 20 piece remote big bands and whatnot. And like what, you know, those guys are doing. And it's like, it's, I love that they're progressing jazz music and they're the next generation to do it. You know, I just, you know, I just hope one day that they can feature more MCs or like start playing, doing covers of R&B ballads or, you know, doing, you know, doing jazz, jazz tribute to Usher, you know, and trap music. Why not? Like hearing Lil Yachty and, and times, times bebop jazz music. And that's what I want to hear more. So, but I mean, so what they can do, the 20 piece virtual big band, it's amazing. It's unbelievable. Like. 
you know, plus it plus it did a version of Giant Steps, which is just like one of its hardest songs to master, you know. So it's like well, But yeah, yeah, man, thanks again for yeah, having me, thank, man. Johnny, thanks Johnny, you have to send me Sam you have to send me samples so so you can get some placements yourself. So you can record from your house. You send me just tell <laughs> you just put on the click, just tell me what the BPMM is and just send it over. <laughs>